Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Brian Sussman, privileged to be filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Hello, Savage Nation. Broadcasting from the left coast, KSFO, the station that Michael put on the map when he began his radio career here in the mid-90s. So I've been listening to him for a long time, and I mentioned that right off the bat. By the way, just to set the table, here's the phone number, 855-400-SAVAGE. So nothing changes with the number. 855-400-7282. All right? Also, don't forget, Michael has the book out right now, Countdown to Mecca. It's a great read. You can also pre-order his new book, Government Zero. It's out in October. Just go to Amazon.com, Government Zero. And I mention that because, can I tell you something? Government Zero. Here's the subtitle. No borders, no language, no culture. I'll repeat. Government Zero by Michael Savage. No borders, no language, no culture. Now, you just heard the top of the show. What's Mike's theme on this program? It's the same theme that he's been talking about ever since I first started listening to him in San Francisco in the mid-90s. His theme then was borders, language, culture. In other words, without a border, without one singular language, And without a culture, you have no country. You have no nation. Now, where am I going with this? It's really simple. Everybody kept saying, oh, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, he doesn't give any specifics. You know, isn't it amazing? The same Libby's out there, including the liberals within the Republican Party, the same Libby's out there saying, oh, you know, uh, Trump's not giving any specifics. Where were they when Obama was running for president? He didn't give any specifics till... Some would argue he's never given any specifics other than how he wants to dismantle this country. The guy's like a wrecking ball. But I digress, as I often do, especially when I get behind this microphone on the Savage Nation. Here's what Donald Trump said. It's kind of like he was saying, okay, you want specifics? Boom. Here are the specifics. Here are the three core principles of his real immigration reform. That's what he's calling it. The three core principles of real immigration reform. It's as if he read, and he probably did. It's as if he, Savage had a book in 2002. I think it was his first book. But it was entitled The Savage Nation. Well, he wrote a ton of books on nutrition prior to this, but I think this was his first political book. The Savage Nation, Saving America from the Liberal Assault on Our Borders, Language, and Culture. Did you hear that? This has been Savage's mantra from the beginning. The Savage Nation. Saving America from the liberal assault on our borders, language, and culture. So the Trump's out there this weekend, and here's what he says. Quote, a nation without borders is not a nation. Ding! Sounds like something I've been hearing Savage talk about for a long time. Way to go, Donald. You're scoring big right now. Donald goes on to say there must be a wall across the southern border. Hello! Not to keep people in, to keep people out. Uh, Not a day goes by in this country now. Well, it's been like this for a long time, but we're only many are only now noticing it, thanks to Trump. But, and again, Savage has been talking about this forever. Look at all the unsavory characters that come across our southern border, and God knows what they do when they get here. They, 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 there are rapists. There are child molesters. There are murderers. There are robbers. There are thugs. There are gang members. You got all that. You've got people from other countries sneaking across this border, OTMs, other than Mexico, including people coming here from the Middle East and China. That that doesn't concern anybody. Put up a stinking wall. It is like an open border for all practical purposes. Listen, if you've got the money, you can get across that border. Anybody can do it. Now you don't even need the money. You could be a 28-year-old with a full beard and a, an interesting little tattoo on your neck that says MS-13. And then in your, uh, in, in, your, in your language of choice, Spanish, just say, Amnesty, I'm a minor. Oh, my goodness. 
For a 17-year-old, that's a pretty thick beard. This is what's happening. It's all taking their word on this stuff. Yes, I'm a mother. These are my children. Ma'am, you look like you're 65. Well, I'm a mother. Your kids are all in their 30s. Well, you know, we age we age uh, early. We age early south of the border. You don't understand. Life's really tough. Trump's first core principle of real immigration reform. Are you ready for this? A nation without borders is not a nation. There must be a wall across our southern border. Boom. Done. Two. A nation without laws is not a nation. This is Donald Trump. Laws passed in accordance with our constitutional system of government must be enforced. (sighs) And then three, a nation that does not serve its own citizens is not a nation. Any immigration plan must improve jobs, wages, and security for all Americans. This is what's happening, folks. This is the Donald. And again, it's as if he... I don't care where he gets this stuff from. It's as if he has read every Michael Savage book because this is a continual theme with Michael Savage. And it's the absolute truth. And so Trump is out there. He hit, oh my gosh, did he hit a nerve. Did he hit a nerve this weekend when he also addressed something that bothers many of us? I don't even see how a liberal could possibly defend this. This whole anchor baby thing. Do you understand we have an entire, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a niche or a niche if you'd like, I, like a business. Uh, birthright citizenship. You've got people coming from all over the world, oftentimes with big money. They get on a plane. They're pregnant. They find a really nice hotel. They've got a concierge doctor they've paid for. And when it's time to finally deliver, they go to a hospital, spit out the child. Bingo! Ding, 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 ding. American citizen! Woohoo! That's got to stop. That is absolute garbage. That is not what our founders intended in this country. So you got that. Plus the people coming across the border. Up, oh, knock, knock, knock. Hello, San Diego Hospital. I'm pregnant. Here we go. Come on. That kind of stuff's got to... That's the stuff that is destroying this country. Everybody has to agree with that. I don't see how anybody could call up to defend that. There's, there's no way. There's no way even a dyed-in-the-wool liberal. Hillary couldn't support that. That's crazy. So all the polling's out. Trump remains in the lead. Trump remains in the lead. What was going on with Trump? Listen, here's what it is. The GOP, and it's wonderful to be behind this microphone. Brian Sussman here filling in for Michael Savage. Listen, here's the deal. And by the way, the phone number is 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Here's the deal. I hope that leaders of the GOP are listening. I really do. Because you guys need to read the tea leaves, you know, stick your, wet your fingers, stick it up, let the wind blow. Whatever it takes. You have to understand, why is Trump so far in the lead? Why is Ben Carson, who most people in America never heard of prior to all this, why is he doing so well? In some polls, he's number two. Carly Fiorina. Carly who? I know her because I live out here in the San Francisco Bay Area. I remember Carly as a businesswoman who was killing it here. Then she went on to run HP. Okay, I remember her. She was a female businessman of the year, businesswoman of the year for many years in a row. I've heard of her. And I heard of Ben Carson because when my kids were in school, uh, my wife made them read one of Ben Carson's books. I think it was called Gifted Hands. I've known of these two people for a long time. And we all know a Donald Trump. He's been in the public eye for a long time. But the bottom line is this. The GOP really needs to look at what's happening and say, whoa, I guess people are sick of politicians. Maybe we better give these guys a shot. And I say that because there's a guy I really like. And I was reading this. It was an opinion piece at World Net Daily, uh, uh, WND. It's an organization I love. I know Michael has uh, fond feelings for uh, Joseph Farah, the CEO of World Net Daily. But Patrick J. Buchanan, who's obviously a high-level political political consultant, he, he knows what's going on, a great commentator, great columnist. He says there is a plot afoot in the Washington Post Conservative Club, the Washington Post newspaper, and the Washington Post Conservative Club to purge Trump from the Republican Party before the primaries begin. Gee, you think so? Patrick Buchanan is spot on with this. And he, and he gives some examples. He talks about George Will. Will wants the Donald excommunicated and locked out of all GOP debates until he kneels and takes a loyalty oath to the nominee. The Post Michael Gerson, uh, ex-speechwriter to uh, George W. Bush, by the way, I believe, right? 
Anyway, Gerson said the establishment Republicans must make clear that Trump has moved beyond the boundaries of serious and civil discourse. He loathes what they're all calling the Trumpites. You like Donald Trump? The GOP has a name for you. You're a Trumpite. (laughs) They say Trumpite's followers are xenophobic. That's what Gerson told CNN, xenophobic. They have a resentment of outsiders, of Mexico, of China, and immigrants. This is what Michael, uh, this is what to Michael Gerson is saying. I always thought the Republican Party was supposed to be this big tent where we have, you know, diverse opinions on a lot of issues and we can argue and we can debate. But I guess they want a monolithic party. One size fits all, kind of like the Democrat Party. I guess that's where we are at this point in time. Unbelievable. We're going to talk more about this. Got a lot of people who want to check in. Obviously, after all, this is the Savage Nation. Some of the other stories that are just huge today. And we'll, we'll talk more about the Donald. We'll talk more about presidential politics, including Hillary. I'm telling you something. Uh, this woman, it's getting, it's getting worse for her. Now, I know they are the best spinmeisters in the world. But it's getting worse for her because now the new Clinton email count, as of well, like an hour ago, 305 documents with potentially classified information. Classified, secret, top secret. And this is a woman who told us, oh, you'll find none of that with me. None of that. And then, then, we find out that, uh, you know, there was concern last week, as you'll remember, that maybe the homebrew server where she had all this stuff had been wiped clean. Now, word is out from the company that was managing that server. Oh, no, we we may have a backup. Uh, It does not look good for this woman. But, But I just ask you this question on the Savage Nation. Do you think anything will come of this? Will she be granted elite immunity, so to speak? These are all valid questions. Can't wait to come back and talk to you. Brian Sussman here, filling in for Michael Savage on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman here, filling in for Michael Savage. A new week, a new set of problems for Team Hillary. As she tries to deal with this expanding email gate scandal. We're going to get into that in just a moment here. Uh, Gary is calling from WABC in New York. We were talking about Donald Trump and his immigration policy. Sounds like something written by Michael Savage as early as 2002 with one of his books, Borders, Language, and Culture. Gary, go ahead. Thank you for calling the Savage Nation. Well, it just seems too good to be true. I mean, every election you have someone telling people, um, you know, how to win the country back. You have, you know, you have Ron Paul, you have Ralph Nader, the Ross Perot. Uh, at the end, um, it just seems that the powers that be, or, you know, what Michael Savage uh, terms the New World Order, is, has too much invested in this uh, election and in their uh, power grab to allow someone like Donald Trump um, uh, single-handedly to, to save people and people themselves in this country do not really want to be saved. I mean, if anybody could take this country back, it's people on the local level. I think a federal election is just a big WWF um, ordeal. Even but, Gary, wouldn't you agree that at least without the Trump talking about this border issue, it wouldn't be an issue right now? Would you agree with that? Of course I agree with it, and it's very important that he's talking about it. And there's a good in everything. And I think he's right, a good role. Right, right on, Gary. Thanks for calling. WABC, New York City. Uh, Here is Paul in, I'm believing, Savannah, Georgia, WMBQ. Paul, thanks for calling. We were talking about one of Trump's uh, foreign, uh, one of his his, uh, immigration policy items has to do with birthright citizenship. We discussed this in the first segment. This is a hot topic. I, I don't see how anybody possibly could defend this practice. Go right ahead. Thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Not only is uh, Donald Trump's position on this uh, defensible, uh, based on the plain language of the 14th Amendment, uh, it is constitutional. If you look at that language, it defines citizenship as either born or naturalized, but that's not enough, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. 
Now, I defy anyone to tell me <clears throat> how the minor child of an illegal, an illegal immigrant could possibly be construed to be subject to any jurisdiction other than that of their parents. Brilliant point. Brilliant point. Brilliant. This squares with the Constitution to a T, the 14th Amendment. Thanks for your call. Let me read it for you. Let me just call it up here on my computer. All persons born or naturalized in the United States, comma, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof, comma, are citizens of the United States and the state wherein they reside. Now, can I just tell you, why do we have the 14th Amendment? Uh, the amendment addresses citizenship rights and equal protection rights of the law. It was totally proposed in response to issues related to former slaves following the Civil War. It has nothing to do with people sneaking across our border, knocking on the door of a hospital in San Diego or Texas and having a baby. It has nothing to do with people flying to this country from China, getting put up at a really nice hotel, getting a concierge doctor, having a baby here so the kid can have U.S. citizenship. That is absolutely flat-out wrong. And, and what happens in every one of these cases, that's why they call them anchor babies. Now this chain migration comes into play, it's nuts. Uh, the other topic in the news has to do, well, I've got one more. Fair, uh, well, let's, let's continue. Let's continue this train of thought because we're going to take a break here in just a moment, and I want to set you up for the next segment because it's going to be huge. Uh, the bottom line is Hillary is it's it's looking it's looking worse for her with each passing hour. Uh, first, she has you know a, a, a big time Democrat operative, I would say, in that of for famed Watergate reporter Bob Woodward, saying this email scandal reminds him of the Nixon tapes and the fall of that former president, which he knows a lot about. So you got that, and now the number of emails with information that was confidential has grown to 305. So we're going to talk about that as well. This, And I'll, re I'll refresh you on what Hillary had to say about this months and months ago when all this came up. Because it sounded to me like she just swore there was nothing confidential whatsoever. Brian Sussman, privileged to be filling in for Michael Savage. Don't forget michaelsavage.com. This is the Savage Nation. All right. Brian Sussman in for Michael Savage. MichaelSavage.com, that's the website. Of course, the new book, well, the book that's currently out, this guy's a prolific writer, Countdown to Mecca. Of course, that's the fiction book, and it's a tremendous read, very exciting. And then Government Zero, that's out in October. You can pre-order it now at Amazon.com. So the subtitle is No Borders, No Language, No Culture. And really, this is where we are today, and Donald Trump, is speaking the minds of us all on this issue. He's brought it to everyone's attention. So we've talked about that, and we'll continue to talk about it, and we'll take your calls at 855-400-SAVAGE. Caller Stan Hall to get to you in just a moment. Hillary Clinton. So now we have more than 300 of her emails. And by the way, that's 5% of those processed so far. They've been flagged for potential secret information. This is what the State Department said today in a federal court. They're admitting this. 300. Reviewers have screened about 20% of the 30,000 emails Clinton turned over to the State Department. So that means if, um, if this rate continues, there are more than 1,500 such messages. Now, let me just... I'm going to let you hear a few pieces of audio, which are just... <laughs> it's going to make your skin crawl. You'll jump out of your seat, two hands on the wheel, whatever it takes to get through these things. Plus... I'm just asking the guys behind the scenes, the great producers of the Savage Nation, is she squawking in these things? Is it one of those, well, I don't give a damn, or whatever she, I, what difference does it make? I, I hear that, and I'm thinking, I know a lot of guys are thinking, oh, she sounds like, you know, my ex. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's uh, reminds me of being a kid screamed at by my mother. But let me get back to this for just a second. Okay. Because messages already released publicly have had information redacted as classified. So this is raising questions about Hillary's security practices. Because she refused to use the regular state.gov system and instead issued herself an email account on a server she kept at her home in New York. 
Again, she's handed over all these messages. The State Department, all the officials are looking at them going, oh, my God, I can't. we got to redact this. you got to redact that. You got. Why are there redactions? I thought she said, you know, there was nothing sensitive on the server. If there are redactions, that means the public's not to, supposed to know this stuff, and that makes me wonder, you're going to trust her homebrew server and its security versus the security that our federal government would, would be providing. Are you kidding me? Now, why is she doing this? Hillary insisted she never sent any information that was classified. And she said she never received information from others that was marked classified. She was on public radio last week. I've never sent nor received any classified email. Nothing marked classified. I think this will all sort itself out. And then, then she t- tries to take credit for the release of the emails. Listen, this was a demand. There are lawsuits involved here. There are full-blown investigations. She said, no, 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 it's, it's all me. She said, if I had not asked for my emails to be made public, none of this would have been in the public arena. Can you believe this? Oh, but there's more, and I'll get to it in just a second. But let's listen to Hillary in her own words. Uh, here she is. Clip seven, guys, please. I think um, first... Um um, I've said in the past that, um, you know, I used uh, a single uh, account for convenience. Obviously, uh, these years later, um, it doesn't look so convenient. <laughs> yeah, giggle, giggle. Huck, yuck, 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 yuck. And we know the convenience thing's a load of garbage as well. I'm going back to an article here from March, March of this year, when all this came out. Hillary said she used a private domain for her official work during a time at the State Department out of convenience, but admitted in retrospect it would have been better to use multiple emails. She said, I opted for convenience to use my personal email account, which was allowed by the State Department. There are others who would contend that is not true. She defended her process in choosing which emails to turn over to the State Department, telling reporters that she and her staff erred on the side of providing anything that could be possibly viewed as work-related. Anything. Oh, my goodness. As you know. She said, listen, the ones that I kept and deleted included everything from wedding planning to yoga routines. But I gave everything that was important and uh, government-related back. She said, now listen to this. She said she didn't use the server. This is the key part here, folks. This is the money line. This is from a CNN article March 11th, 2015. She said she didn't use the server to send any classified information and only emailed one foreign leader from the United Kingdom during her time at state. Didn't use the server to send any classified information. And as of today, they have 305 emails, folks. 305 flagged for potential secret information. This is from the State Department reporting in a federal court today. Now, in March, she said, oh, there's nothing. And today, there are 305. And tomorrow, there will be more. And the day after that, there will be more as well. This is garbage, folks. How can she can she can run, but she can't hide. The question is, will she receive elite immunity? You think the Obama administration is really going to prosecute her over this? Blake's calling from WBAP in Texas. Blake, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thanks for being on with us. Hi, Brian. Thank you for taking my call. You know, one of the things that really greatly concerns me and it kind of distresses me is the fact that we lost uh, Ambassador Christopher Stevens. And I'm wondering if using her own server in the communications that was happening during the time that they were uh, collecting the weapons from uh, the fighters there in, in Libya, they were they had a program where they were transforming bring them over to uh, the rebel fighters in Syria. And at some point they decided that the Syrian um, fighters were more barbaric than the Assad regime and they had to put it on hold. And I'm sure there must have been some kind of communications to where they were going to curtail that program. And if, she, and, if, and, if, and if she was using that server and it was compromised, that information got back to, uh, to al-Qaeda operates that they, they would not know that there would be an, uh, a res- an immediate response that would uh, be retaliatory. Well, l- listen, Blake, Blake, I, I appreciate your call. I know where you're going with this. Let me just sum it up. Here's the deal. You know, this correspondent 
Uh, as Now, okay, let me just backtrack, collect my thoughts. This came out, I believe, through Breitbart this weekend. Um, this could expose Clinton to some serious legal problems because if backup files show, this is really the key part of this. Because what they're saying right now is there's a backup server. This originally came out Sunday from ABC. Again, you know, these are, these are <laughs> mainstream, otherwise liberal media outlets that are doing some reporting here that doesn't look good for Hillary. So if they're smelling blood in the water, folks, this is serious stuff. If they're smelling blood, there's a body here, folks. Okay, so this is on Sunday. ABC News, Jonathan Carl, I believe he's their chief White House correspondent. He reported that there may exist a complete set of Clinton emails on a backup server. This would include even the ones she said she deleted. And if they did scrub the main server, there is a backup with a full record of Hillary's correspondence. Even the emails she determined were personal involving yoga and wedding and all that kind of stuff. So Breitbart ended up reporting, I believe this was on Sunday as well. I mean, it's, it's great. This could totally expose Hillary Clinton to serious legal problems if the backup files, get ready for this, show that she destroyed evidence important to the Benghazi investigation. Boom, there it is. That's what we're talking about here, folks. Now, just continuing. Here's Claire McCaskill. This is that nutty, that nutty old bat who's a, who's a senator from uh, Missouri. Here's what she says about Hillary's Eve. This is how desperate they are to spin this, uh, to uh, spin this stuff. She says the Hillary email scandal is a godsend. She says it's a good old fashioned political witch hunt. Listen to clip five. Secretary of State Clinton was not the first Secretary of State to use personal email, but she's the only one that has turned over tens upon thousands of her emails and asked them to become public. Now she's turned over her server. What this has turned into is just a good old-fashioned political witch hunt. Give me a break. You know, of course you're going to go there. Of course you're going to say that. Just say it enough. You'll get a few drones that believe it. Listen to uh, clip 11. Here is Hillary talking about this. You know, she's... This is the, the, the talking points memo went out. OK, we're going to say this is partisan. We're going to say this is a witch hunt. We're going to say this, that and the other. Here's Hillary following the lead or taking the lead as it were. Clip 11. That's what I talk about on the campaign trail. This is the usual um, partisanization, which I may have just made up a word um, right. of anything that goes on. And I've been at this for a really long time. And um, I think people. In uh, Iowa, just like people across the country, are going to want to vote for somebody that they believe will deliver results for them. And uh, I think uh, I've got a very strong case to make on that. Oh. And then here's Hillary. You just got to hear this. Two hands on the wheel, please. Otherwise, you're going to crash. This will be clip 12 when we get there. But let me just set it up. Hillary actually is trying to make it sound as if she was the one who said, no, listen, you know, here's how we can set all this. Let me turn over all my emails. You know, this would be a really good idea. In the name of transparency, I, you guys, you know, people are talking. Here, here are all my emails. Just go ahead. And, and, but, well, just listen to clip 12. Take a listen. I think this will all sort itself out. And in a way, um, it's kind of an interesting insight into uh, how the government operates. Because if I had not asked for my emails all to be made public, none of this would have been in the public arena. But I want people to know what we did. I'm proud of the four years uh, that I uh, was Secretary of State. So right, I, right. I know this is all just going to you know, work itself out right. as we go forward. Yeah, world is in flames, and you're proud of what you did at State. Great. Don's calling from WVNN in Alabama. Don, go right ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. What she just said is a crock, because if you work for the government or the military, you have to use a .gov or a .mil address. What she's doing is she's supposed to do that by law, make everything on there. Let's talk about the secure Internet and the non-secure Internet. Those two are never supposed to cross. So if she's got unsecure items, and everybody's chasing after the fact that she's got classified, the beginning part is she had an illegal email server to begin with, let alone the fact that classified had to move from a secure information facility over to a non-secure facility. I, I would agree with you. Right on, Don. Thanks for checking in on the Savage Nation. Other stories in the news. Did you see this? Did you see this? Well, speaking of security breaches, did you see that one? 
Uh, now we have over 220,000 people. It's just see, Here's the deal. Our own, the federal government's computers are being breached on a regular basis these days. The hackers are unrelenting. And they're really diab- diabolically sharp people. They can get into the government servers. How much easier to get into Hillary's homebrew? I mean, I'm just asking the question here on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage today. But I've got one more for you. Just speaking of the breaches. I'm at Drudge Report and notice this headline. It's just amazing. The IRS says thieves stole tax information from another 220,000 people. So you just got to, I mean, she's got this homebrew server. I know she hired an organization after a period of time. Instead of an intern watching over it, she hired a professional operation. But can you believe this? This is serious stuff, folks. She's the Secretary of State. We already know about one email that had to do with the CIA drone operation. But then you've got this story in the news. Uh, This broke today. The number of illegal immigrant moms and children jumping the southwest border swelled in July. Swelled. So... Remember the surge we had last summer? Folks, it's on and it's bigger than ever. And so as a result of this, you know, we don't know what to do with all these people. We don't have enough luxury resorts to house them. This is just incredible. We'll talk more about that. We're going to take your calls in the Savage Nation, of course. Phone number is 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE. Don't forget michaelsavage.com for all your news needs. Brian Sussman out on the left coast, filling in for Dr. Savage on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman, filling in for Dr. Michael Savage here on this, the Savage Nation. And, of course, the phone number is 855-400-7282, 855-400-SAVAGE. We'll get to more callers in just a moment. Besides talking about presidential politics, besides talking about our borders, language, and culture, besides talking about Trump bringing this to the forefront, besides talking about anchor babies and what you think of that, in the next hour, we've got to talk about this. Savage's producers brought this to my attention because they know my meteorological background and uh, this, this is wild. So you've got this climate lawsuit right now. It's, it's a group called Our Children's T- Trust. It's an Oregon-based nonprofit. It's spearheaded a climate-related lawsuit in all 50 states. And it includes a claim by James Hansen. He's a climate researcher, hero amongst the left. He headed NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies for more than 30 years. He's the guy that first warned Congress of global warming, so to speak, in 1988. His granddaughter is one of the plaintiffs in this lawsuit, and he's listed as a guardian for future generations. Listen, I've written so much. I got all the dirt on this guy, and I will unload in the next hour, and I can't wait to have the opportunity to do that. Uh, something else that we're talking Oh, and then, then I've just got to share this one with you as well, because here another one of these green schemes. In California, we're all over this stuff. Now, California, you don't, you don't know this, but I do because I live in the San Francisco Bay Area and I'm a native of this state. We are totally upside down. When you look at the unfunded liabilities, for example, of our uh, state employee retirement fund, the state retirement fund for employees, it has an unfunded liability of $750 billion. The teacher's retirement fund is $170 billion upside down. That's in California, folks. This is serious stuff. We'll talk about all that. A lot of people, and it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. Thanks to Trump, we're all talking about this. But anchor babies. You know, Trump this weekend said, listen, there are people that need to be deported from this country. Yeah, it's about time. And he wants to stop the anchor baby thing. Well, you got a lot of people who want to talk about that, and we'll get to you. So, boy, you know, oftentimes on a Monday, it's like you're scrambling to find great things to talk about. We've got a ton of stuff because the future of this nation is at stake, and we're talking about it on this The Savage Nation. Brian Sussman, proud to be filling in. Don't forget, michaelsavage.com for all your news needs. This is The Savage Nation. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. (laughs) 
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage, borders, language, culture. Boy, those are the three words of the day, aren't they? Borders, language, culture. Those are the words of the day. But living out here on the left coast and working for KSFO Radio, hosting their morning show, before I was ever on this radio station, I was a TV meteorologist in San Francisco. And I began listening to this guy who took to the airwaves of KSFO, the very station I work for now. This is, again, you know, mid-90s. Guy comes on and he's talking about borders, language, culture. And he takes the San Francisco media by storm. He becomes an overnight sensation. And then, of course, that guy, Michael Savage, becomes the guy that you know to this day. Borders, language, culture, that's always been his deal. Because you don't have a nation unless you've got the border secure. You don't have a nation unless you have a singular language that everyone wants to speak. No more multiculturalism. A singular language and culture. The American ethos. Borders, language, culture. This is what it's all about right now, thanks to Donald Trump. Donald Trump has brought it to our attention. We're talking about that here on the Savage Nation. Because of Donald. I don't think we'd be discussing this otherwise. We'd have a Marco Rubio. Listen, I realize there are many of you who think Rubio is just great. I don't like him. I don't like him. The deal he cut a couple years ago with Chuck Schumer, senator from New York, that amnesty plan, I wrote him off right away. I look at Rubio, I see his lips moving, and I'm thinking, is he lying to me? I watch him in that debate. Everything he said was so smooth and so eloquent and so perfect. Yeah, it was smooth, eloquent, and perfect because he memorized every word. I can tell... I've done a lot of public speaking over the years. I've got this one figured out. Donald Trump, no script. Plays without a net. Tells you what's in his heart, and that's what people love. Would he make a good president? Listen, at this point in time, he's bringing to the fore the issues of the day that matter to so many people, I would say, most people in this country. Now, I don't know what it's like where you live, but I can tell you what it's like where I live. There are certain neighborhoods I would never go into at night because I'm fearful. Seriously. I, there are certain places I go in the San Francisco Bay Area and I think, okay, what country am I in right now? I'm just, oh, I'm xenophobic. I see. Oh, God. Come on, folks. Put your head on straight here. We are a nation of immigrants. I get that. Very few people can say my family didn't immigrate to this country. They founded it like my wife's family can say. On both sides. Seriously, they, they don't. When, when you ask her, oh, when does your family immigrate to this country? They'll say, we didn't immigrate to this country. We founded the country. But the rest of us, okay, we immigrated here. Why? Because our forefathers loved America. They wanted to be Americans. Now you come to America, hey, you know, do your own thing. Huh? Wear your own clothing. Speak your own language. Cook your own food. Eh? Screw America. Then you get a first lady who says, all that for a flag? And a president of the United States who said, I don't have to wear that flag on my lapel. Remember that? Oh, everybody forgets about that. And this anchor baby thing. By, uh, thank you, Donald Trump, for bringing this up. This, there are so many problems with the anchor. And folks, just do your own little research on this one. There, it's a cottage industry. People are flying here from all over the world to have babies so their kids could be citizens. That's not what was intended by the 14th Amendment. Let's go to Andrew at WABC. A lot to talk about this hour. I'm so glad you're here. And by the way, let me just also mention 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. All right, we've got Andrew, WABC, New York. Andrew, thanks for calling. You're on the Savage Nation. Trump is right, and I'm a journalist whose wife, my wife is a legal immigrant from Thailand. My news desk sent me to cover a protest. Illegals were protesting detention of, they were calling them immigrants, but I kept saying, you mean illegal immigrants. The woman didn't, didn't think she was going to get tough questions. I said to her, first of all, she started off by lying and saying, well, there's no legal way to immigrate here. 
And I said, oh, no, my wife is here legally. There's a million visas granted every single year. My two best friends, their wives are Spanish immigrants. So so first of all, I I shot that lie down. And then she started attacking the country, saying, well, the babies that are born here. And I said, no, it's not the fault of the United States. It's the fault of the people who snuck over. And you're exasperating the problem. I said, do you support illegal immigration? If you support anchor babies, you're exasperating the problem. And lastly, I said to her, I say, what country did you immigrate from? And then when they answer, I say, well, shouldn't you apologize to the fellow citizens of your country that you jumped in front of them and took the, their, you know, their spot? Good point. Job? Andrew, this Maybe. is really true. I, I meet legal immigrants to this country all the time, all the time who are so outraged by illegal immigration because these individuals did all the right things. They filled out all the papers. They did all the work. They got on their knees at night and prayed that they might be able to get into the United States of America. They waited their turn. They waited in line. They took the health check. They uh, they did not want to be a public charge when they got to this country. And they see what's happening, and they're angry. And by the way, it's not just... it's. You have a lot of Latino immigrants that feel this way. People who immigrated to this country legally are saying, wait a second, this is not fair. You're right, Andrew. Phobic, because these people that charge that, first of all, they're either they're not legal immigrants or they're not married to a legal immigrant. They're usually white people married to other native-born whites, so it's, they're hypocrites. They're, they don't, they're not directly connected with immigration. That's why they criticize from afar. And uh, borders, language, and culture. Most immigrants, like you said, fully support what Trump said. Just like yes, uh, of course they do. No, this is this is right on, Andrew. Thanks for your call on the Savage Nation. I mean, listen to this. This is a story that uh, that that is out right now, and it it really I mean, it tells you when Obama said he was going to fundamentally transform America. Did anybody really know what that meant? All these suckers say, oh, yeah, man, that's cool. We want to fundamentally transform. Uh, this Here's my analogy on this. Could you imagine you decide you're a guy and you see a woman that you want to marry and you propose to her and she says yes and you say, and you know what? I'm so glad you proposed. I'm so glad you accepted my proposal. Now what I want to do is I want to fundamentally transform you. Okay, how's that going to go over? I want to fun because I love you so much. I want, you know, we're going to do a little little plastic surgery on the face. We'll get you the boob job. We're going to do a little liposuction. And I've always wanted somebody who runs marathons. You're going to start running marathons. Come on, what is it? You can't do that. You get slapped upside the head so fast. This is what Obama wants to do to this land he supposedly loves. He, I'll stop right there. But listen to this. This is a story out today. It involves Obama's fundamental transformation of America, besides basically opening up the border to our South, and Trump's right on that. Uh, what does he want to do? He won't allow Christians to immigrate to this country. Have you noticed that? The news story today. The Yazidi people. The Yazidi people are not Christians. They're, uh, they're a monotheistic community. I believe they're actually Kurds, but they're scattered throughout Iraq, Syria, Turkey. These Yazidis are the people who are being hunted like uh, animals by ISIS. Remember about a year ago, ISIS had 40,000 of these people on top of a hill and the mountain was surrounded, supplies were running low and they faced certain death until airstrikes and boots on the ground cleared an escape route. Guess what? 10% of those people died. 10% died. And, And they die by crucifixion. They die by getting their heads lopped off. Just all these by ISIS, by ISIS. So these Yazidis who have made it out are saying, listen, we're being hunted like rabid animals. Can we come to the United States? Obama turns them all down. No, I can't come to our country. Oh, maybe if you're the Muslim persuasion, come on in. We're not taking the Yazidis. We're not taking the Christians. Christians are being hunted like rabid animals throughout the world. Can't let them in either. I know people who are in this country on religious visas, Christians from other countries coming here to do church work, uh, to do social work, to do counseling, etc. So these are Christians from other countries who come here to do work and help churches. 
booted out. This is happening left, right, and center. People who have been in this country with religious, Christian people with religious visas, they've been here for decades, booted out by this administration for some of the most cockamamie reasons you could possibly imagine. Oh, yeah, mister, I've always been a Christian. Listen, I'm not judging the man on whether he's going to heaven or hell. I'm just telling you something. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. This is, or fool me, tw- fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. You, see, you know what I'm saying? Don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't buy any of this stuff with this guy. Fundamentally transform America. Now I'm crazy. Ah. Uh. Okay, so where was I here? Hillary's emails, we'll talk about that. The climate lawsuit. I've got some audio we'll get into in just a little bit. There is literally a lawsuit being planned right now, or being pursued right now, and it involves all 50 states. It's a group called the Children's Trust out of Oregon, and it includes a claim by James Hansen. Do you know who he is? Oh, I know who he is. The, uh, he's Mr. Global Warming. It's like the, the two Mr., Mr. and Mrs. Global Warming. Mr. Global Warming is James Hansen. Mrs. is Al Gore. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> I'll tee off on that in just a couple minutes here on The Savage Nation. Let us go quickly to... Um, Ray's calling from KSFO, my home station. Michael's home station. Ray is always an interesting caller. Ray, welcome to The Savage Nation. Go right ahead quickly, please. Hey, great to have you on board, Brian, with the Savage Nation. Um, I've got. I'm. I'm going to quickly fold up a tinfoil hat here in front of the audience and get your opinion on it. Great. I think. I think these email leaks are. are they're obviously, you know, um, coming from the Obama administration. They had to know she had this private email server all along. How could they not know? The first email correspondence would have revealed this, and yet they wait six years to expose us at a really unopportune time for her. Right. Now, it's no secret that the Obamas don't like the Clintons. The Clintons don't like the Obamas. Correct. Now, what if Obama was... He doesn't want Hillary to be, to, to be president. That's my theory. He doesn't want to be the guy who takes out the possible first woman president. He wants the Republicans to do it for him so they can be the bad guys. <clears throat> In other words, this information leaks out. Trey Gowdy gets a hold of it. Daryl Issa gets a hold of it. They start to do investigations. They make her dirty, and the Republicans take down Hillary, and they get the blame for it. Okay, you can take the tinfoil off your head. That was an interesting theory, and we'll talk more about it. The phone number on the Savage Nation, that's Ray calling out of KSFO in San Francisco, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Of course. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. By the way, the book, the book, I just tweeted this out, pre-order a copy of Savage's new book, Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture. I mean, so timely. So it'll be out in October, but you can pre-order it now. Again, just go to michaelsavage.com for that. Here's Trump. Here's Trump. See, I, I believe the GOP needs to look at what's happening right now with Trump, with Ben Carson, and even with Carly Fiorina. Why, why are these people who have never run for anything suddenly so popular? What, what's going on here? What is going on? Take a listen to Trump in his own words. This will be, hmm, clip three, please. I had yesterday a lobbyist call me up. That's a friend of mine. Good guy. Smart as hell. He's for his client. I don't blame him. He said, Donald, I want to put $5 million into your campaign. I said, I don't need it. I don't want it. He said, no, no, I want to put $5 million in. I said, I don't want it. Because when you come back to me in two years and you want help for a company that you're representing or a country that you're representing, I'm going to do the right thing for the people of the United States, and I don't want to have to insult you. So honestly, I appreciate it. I don't want your $5 million. This is what we really want. We're we're tired of these politicians being bought and sold. Now, Trump's a guy who buys and sells people. He knows how to influence people. I mean, that's how you do business deals. And uh, if you look at the business of America, we're not doing all that well these days, are we? Uh, You look at our, our mounting federal debt, you look at our mounting federal budget and the deficits there. 
what, what's this about Trump on jury duty today? I'm, I'm looking at the news. I keep seeing him. He was on jury duty. He was on jury duty. I'm looking at a Snapchat showing Donald Trump reporting for jury duty. Let's go to Eddie, WDRC, Connecticut. Eddie, what's what's up with Trump and jury duty? A lot of people are saying this thing was a, was some kind of... So, first of all, I hear Trump's on du- duty, right? Now, I'm thinking that the Democrats found out he got fined for not showing up a couple months ago. Right, got $250 fine for not showing, right. <laughs> Big deal, right? Right. <laughs> now... What's a uh, guy worth $10 billion as an equal right or an equal peer set? What, what is the guy? Are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm there. Listen, I, 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 no, I get your point. Thanks for calling on the Savage Nation. Listen, I do know this. Trump was facing a $250 fine for um, skipping jury duty. But they said, okay, if you show up this next time around, you're not going to have to pay the fine. What? I don't know what to make of that. But I can tell you, you know, the, the lefties in the media are all over that. It's like, they're, they're, they're making this a bigger deal than Hillary's email scandal or Benghazi. But that's the way they operate. Now, we're going to talk more about this on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. I am going to illuminate you regarding this eco group that is suing all 50 states and they they they're getting traction on this it's in the name of the climate and they're contending that uh, the federal government has been purposefully fouling the atmosphere to uh, further its evil deeds this is really interesting and i'm going to name names and take prisoners on this the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Borders, language, culture. Hey, Brian Sussman here filling in for Dr. Savage. Of course, that's his mantra. It has been ever since he started in radio in the 90s. Borders, language, culture. And those are the issues of the day, aren't they? And we're going to talk more about that in just a moment. You know, the guys behind the scenes here at the Savage Nation found a nugget. I, I, Now, there are liberal outlets that are championing what you're about to hear is the gospel. Just, oh, this is great. Oh, yes, this is so true. Oh, this is what's needed. But there's an Oregon-based nonprofit. They're called Our Children's Trust. They've spearheaded climate-related lawsuits in all 50 states. Now, they include a claim by James Hansen. James Hansen is a climate researcher This is a guy that was in charge of the Earth's temperature for years with the Goddard Institute for Space Studies at NASA. For 30 years, he was in charge of the Earth's temperature. I mean, this is a guy that, according to yours truly, and I've written a couple books on this topic, and I am, by training, a meteorologist. This is a guy who rigged the record of the Earth's temperature. And this is a guy who, in 1988, was warning Congress about man-caused global warming. Now, his granddaughter is one of the plaintiffs in this lawsuit, and he is also listed as a guardian for future generations. So the suit, this is interesting because it really debuts a new legal framework to fight climate change, human-caused climate change, and one that portrays federal support for the development and use of fossil fuels as a violation of the Fifth and Ninth Amendments of the Constitution, believe it or not. So this Fifth and Ninth Amendment argument, we could get into the weeds, and I don't want to do that with you, but it alleges that the U.S. government knowingly polluted the atmosphere and ignored a half century of its own research and failed to enact proposed plans that they say could have kept carbon emissions within a scientifically acceptable safe range, which is a load of garbage. Uh, CO2 is good for the atmosphere. It always has been. The carbon cycle, now I'm, I'm speaking to you now as a meteorologist. The carbon cycle, folks, is so immense and, quite frankly, so slow, you, you cannot, humans could not alter it. It's impossible. And by the way, when CO2 does increase in the atmosphere, it's always been great for plant life and life in general. That's, that's the truth. No one can argue what I just told you. But... 
The resulting pollution, according to this lawsuit, is a violation of our children's rights and their due process and equal protection under the law. I'm not making this stuff up. This is going to shock you. Take a listen to this. This is from, this is from MSNBC. And basically what they're saying is that in action, if we don't do anything to stop human-caused climate change, it's a violation of right to life, right to liberty, and right to property. Listen to this clip one. I'm suing the executive branch of the United States federal government. I'm suing the United States government, including the president of the United States. So the people who run the country. The purpose of the case is to protect our rights for life, liberty, and property. They depend upon a healthy climate. And right now that healthy climate is being negatively impacted by the government allowing and promoting the use of fossil fuel. And yet we're the ones who are going to have to deal with the impact. There's a bunch of fields like this that are just, just like open and, and dry. And if it even gets hot, it'll just like, it just Oof. burns. So my great, 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 great grandmother traveled across the Oregon Trail and became one of the very first women to own a farm in Oregon. And I'm worried about the impacts that climate change could have on the farm. I mean, we're talking about um, increased wildfires. I don't know if the farm's going to be around for my, you know, great, 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 great grandkids. Different, like, rivers and um, creeks are drying up, and having them get warmer gets more algae into them, and so it's, like, really gross to swim in them. I think we're taking extreme action because we need extreme change. Um, but again, I don't even think this is that extreme. We're really just advocating for our rights. I'm doing this case because it's the first of it, its type and scale towards the federal government, and it could be groundbreaking. So this is an ad by the Oregon-based uh, Our Children's Trust. And again, it includes a claim by James Hansen, <sighs> former NASA space studies temperature guru, uh, who is listed as a guardian for future generations in this lawsuit. Can I just tell you something? This is uh, not to take away from any of, of Michael Savage's wonderful books, because Savage is just the very best, and I could spend all day talking about his wonderful books. I'm just going to read one little portion of a book I wrote a number of years ago called Climate Gate, because this is really important, and it's germane to the topic. For the record, Dr. Robert Jastrow, I write, a founder of the Goddard Space Institute, he was the founder of the Goddard Space Institute, folks, reportedly said to a trusted friend towards the end of his life that he didn't have many regrets, but this one true regret as a professional researcher was handpicking Jim Hansen to be his successor. The friend that he told this to was Dr. Willie Soon, a friend of mine now, he became a friend after I wrote this book, and a Harvard-Smithsonian astrophysicist. I, I could go on and on about James Hansen, but the bottom line is this guy has been making money off of global warming, lining his own pockets. 2007, he split a million-dollar award from the Dan David Prizes category of Future Quest for Energy. Uh, Hansen was a, a, a paid consultant to Al Gore during the making of An Inconvenient Truth. This is a guy who in 2001, the Heinz Foundation, you know, uh, John Kerry's wife, awarded James, Can uh, James Hansen with a payment of a quarter of a million dollars for helping make global warming a household phrase. This is a guy who, in my opinion, and I've got all the facts to back this up, rigged the temperature record of the United States of America and the world to make it look like things were warming up. This is the guy we're talking about right here, folks. So, of course, he wants to sue the federal government. Of course, he wants to sue all 50 states. He's still trying to make a name for himself, and there's money in this for him, I'm sure, as well. And by the way, I will just say this right off the bat regarding global warming. We've got 50 states. I know we have a president who once contended we have 57 states. He was, I, I guess, confused with the 57 Islamic states. We've got 50 states. 22 of those states recorded their all-time record high temperatures in the 1930s. The 30s, the hottest decade on record the hottest de uh, decade on record. And I could tell you, if you really want to be um, specific with the statistics, if you look at the most reliable temperature recording sites in the United States that have existed since the mid-1800s, when we had really reliable records available, we have the best temperature record on the planet. 
if you look at the most reliable data, not places like Central Park in New York, where, you know, it was once an idyllic park with not much around it. And and now, of course, it's this this it's this huge, huge uh, massive civilization and concrete and pavement and air conditioning units and that. Just take out those sites. Go to sites where they've been taking the temperature now for many, many years in this country, and they've remained the same. They've remained the same. They're out in pastures. They're in farmland. They're in parks that haven't been altered. They're not all of a sudden standing next to air conditioning units or on pavement or something like that. When you look at those wonderful recording stations since 1940 in the United States, I realize it's just a small slice of the earth, but in the United States, since the 1940s, we've seen a net cooling. That's the truth. A net cooling. And then when you look at satellite data, which these dweebs will not take into consideration wholeheartedly and wholly, the temperature has not been warming. It's been flat for the last two decades thereabouts. All right, so these are some of the things we're talking about on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is John WDRC in Connecticut. John, you're on the air. Thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Yes, I think those uh, those kids have been brainwashed because I think it's ignorant for us to think that, that we can actually predict that what this Earth can is going to do or will do. It's changing. It's going to it's going to continue to change even sure. after we're, you know, we've been gone. So yes, it, the same- that's that's the na- the nature of climate is to change. There's no question about that. Uh, you can go back over time. We had an ice age. I mean, no one disputes that we've had at least one ice age. Some would say we've had as many as perhaps three. What caused that? What caused the warm up after the ice age? We saw an incredible warm period of time on the entire planet called the medieval warm period. I mean, you can't blame that on cars. You can't blame that on cow flatulence. What caused that? Climate changes, and those changes are caused by, this is why the astrophysicist community is in complete agreement with this, John, it's caused by the sun. It's the, it's changes in radiation from the sun that cause for changes in our climate, as well as our Earth and um, and its general rotation uh, around the sun. It's orbit around the sun. We- anyway, John, yeah, John, I, I got you, Drift. Thank you for calling here on the Savage Nation. Okay, so let's talk about a couple other things. Let's talk about Hillary Clinton. The count now is up to 305. What are we talking about? 305 emails with potentially classified information. This is the same woman who told us, oh, no, I've turned over everything. There was nothing classified on my homebrew server. We'll talk about that. Uh, We've also got to talk about the fact that uh, the Donald is right. Look what's happening. Thanks to Obama's immigration policies, we have another surge on our southern border. Now, my goodness, how could we stop that? How about a nice fence? A nice big fence. And I like the idea of having Mexico pay for it. Uh, So these are new statistics just in today. We're going to be talking about that. Is the GOP out to get Donald Trump? Speaking of the Donald, it would appear as if the GOP elites are plotting a purge of Trump's campaign. And then do you agree with Ben Carson on this? Carson, smart guy, maybe the smartest guy of the whole bunch. He's standing firm on his suggestion that Obama has anti-Semitic views. Does he or does he not? Phone number on the Savage Nation, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. We'll also be getting into the specifics of the Donald's foreign policy because he's been coming out with more and more specifics. People were very, very critical. Oh, he doesn't have anything specific to say. What are his plans? You know, I believe the Donald's got a new book out, and I believe if you were to read that book, you'd see everything that there is to talk about in terms of running for president, and what you will do when you're in office should you win. It's all in his book. Why doesn't the media just pick up a copy? Or better yet, why doesn't the media pre-order a copy of Savage's next book, Government Zero? Because you don't have a government if you're not controlling the border. You don't have a government if you're not saying, yes, English is the language, and the American ethos, the American culture is the culture. That's the title of the book, Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. It would seem as if at this point in time, we do not have a government, at least one that's working efficiently. So we'll be talking about that. Let's go to the lines one more time. 
Paul, WFNC. We were talking about global warming just a moment ago in this lawsuit going out to all 50 states saying it's a child's right to end the use of fossil fuels. What say you, Paul? Well, uh, I'm, I'm grateful to be on the air. I'm, uh, Mr. Savage, I'm sorry that you're not there today, but uh, I'm glad my call is going through. Uh, all, all this talk over, over global warming, didn't our president sit down with China and give them anything they want to do for the next, I don't know, 30 years that pollute the earth, whatever you want to do, yeah. find off on it? Yeah, exactly. That was part of that last treaty. You know, it was uh, kind of an open-ended deal. Yeah, China said, yes, we will abide by all these new carbon restrictions in the future. That was pretty much what they said. And by the way, you know, I'm out here in California. Uh, there are now readings and atmospheric readings that have been taken showing that China's pollution, and trust me, they pollute. They they have no regard for the atmosphere whatsoever. Those of you who do business in China know exactly what I'm talking about. You need a respirator on certain days. But China's pollution is now showing up out here on the left coast. Lots to talk about. So glad you're here. Let's take a bunch of calls in the next segment. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman in for Dr. Savage. We'll get back into some of the breaking news of the day involving Hillary's emails, etc. There's a lot going on. We'll hit it hard in the next hour. We were just talking about this crazy story coming out of a nonprofit group in Oregon, Our Children's Trust. They're suing all 50 states. Uh, essentially what they're saying is, you know, the kids have a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And all of this global warming that we're not stopping is ruining and wrecking their future. So it's a big-time lawsuit. And it's, it's very disturbing, very disturbing. Because, of course, what they're using is junk science. And who's going to end up profiting from this lawsuit? Lawyers and activists. But let's go to Kevin... WABC New York. Kevin, you're on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. Yeah, hey, Brian. Thanks for taking my call. Um, this is this is where I feel a little intellectually uh, challenged, but uh, when I hear this story, the first thing that pops into my mind, and I'm going to go out on a limb here, I, I have a strange feeling these are the same folks that are huge advocates for Planned Parenthood and abortion, and of course the selling of all these, uh, these fetuses that have just... Uh, hit the news lately but now they want to they want to save the kids now from the fossil fuels but damn those kids when it comes time to uh pull in the plug on their lives no, that's it right? kevin good point and thanks for making it on the savage nation so they're all about you know this lawsuits in the name of the children oh we're got climate change we got to do something in the name of the children whereas the most dangerous place in america for a child today is the womb John's calling from WVNN in Alabama. John, quickly, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Thanks for calling. Hi, this is Pam. Oh, Pam. Pam, are you in Alabama? <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, I'm in Pam, have you talked to a call screener before you're talking to me? Okay. <laughs> this is my first rodeo. I think John got tired of waiting. <laughs> John's on six. That was five. All right. John, stay on six. Who's on first? That's the question. Okay, we'll get to all that and more. I'm so glad you're with us. Always a pleasure. Always a privilege to be filling in for the doctor. MichaelSavage.com for all your news needs. This is The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Michael Savage off today. Brian Sussman filling in. Michael and I share something in common, and that is KSFO in San Francisco. That's the the station where Michael started his radio career. He put the station on the map. I mean, immediately we went from being a nothing station to with uh, you know beautiful call letters KSFO, SFO like the airport in San Francisco, but KSFO. I mean, he put that station on the map as a conservative talker in the mid '90s. I used to listen to him. I was on TV back then, and I loved his mantra: borders, language, culture. He's been talking about this like a prophet since the '90s. Look where we are today. Look where we are today. The phone number, by the way, on this, the Savage Nation. Very simple. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. We're going to take a lot of calls this hour, so queue up and get ready to go. Donald Trump comes out with his immigration reform policy. 147 words. Now, of course, you know the critics right off the bat, 147 words. Hey, critics, have you read the Constitution? Have you read the Declaration of Independence? Very succinct. Right to the point. Donald Trump, I like it. I like what I'm reading. I'm glad he is there for such a time as this, Donald. Now, whether he's the man or not, you know what? He's bringing to the debate, he's bringing to the forefront items that worry most of us. And if you're not worried, you're absolutely ignorant and stupid. Fill in the blank. Come on, folks. We got a problem in this country. Oh, I don't want to be... Viewed as a hater, sober up. Country's going to hell in a handbasket. I don't want to be deemed a xenophobe. That's what they're... I see you got uh, these high-profile elites in the Republican Party. If you're a... They have a name for you if you like Trump. You're a Trumpite. A Trumpite. A Trumpite. And if you're a Trumpite, you're also a xenophobe. This is where they're going, folks. And you hate Mexico. And you hate China. Okay, let's... Here is his formal immigration policy. Donald Trump released yesterday. I love it. Straight and to the point. Anyone with a brain can figure this one out. When politicians talk about immigration reform, he writes, they mean amnesty, cheap labor, and open borders. Amnesty, cheap labor, open open borders, immigration reform. And it's always this cockamamie, uh, now it's me talking, it's always this cockamamie comprehensive immigration reform. Why does it have to be comprehensive? So these dolts in Washington, D.C. can more easily pass a bill. Guys, take it piece by piece, because piece by piece it's broken. Continuing with Donald Trump. The Schumer-Rubio immigration bill was nothing more than a giveaway to the corporate patrons who run both parties. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I could never vote for Marco Rubio. No, that's me talking. You heard what Donald said. After every one of Donald's comments, I just can't help it. i got to pop off. Continuing with Donald's words. Real immigration reform puts the needs of working people first, not wealthy Globe-trotting donors. You know, if I, we could just stop right there, because Trump also said something. Guys, and I'm speaking to the guys running the show for the Savage Nation. Let's play clip number four, because here is Trump in his own words. He's turning down money. He, he knows, listen, it's a, biblical, it's a biblical precept. There are strings attached to money. There are strings attached to loans. That's the way money works. Trump knows this. He's a businessman. He gets it. Listen to clip four here. I'm turning down so much money. But if he put it up, I'd feel obligated because I'm a loyal person. Just like Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush and all of them. I'm not just talking about Jeb Bush. Hillary, too. Believe me, nobody played the game better than I did. I know the game from the other side. And that's the way it worked. He knows these people can be bought because he's bought them. He knows this. He knows this. But getting back to Trump's foreign policy statement, and then we'll get to your calls on the Savage Nation at 855-400-7282. Okay, just continuing here. Donald Trump's immigration policy. 
He says real immigration reform puts the needs of working people first, not wealthy, globe-trotting donors. We are the only company in the world whose immigration system puts the needs of other nations ahead of our own. That must change. He's right. We effectively have open borders in this country. Unless, unless you're trying to immigrate here legally. And God forbid you're a Christian trying to immigrate this country, fleeing from ISIS. Good luck. Here are the three core principles of real immigration reform, according to Donald Trump. Number one, a nation without borders is not a nation. There must be a wall across the southern border. I agree. You agree. Most people agree. A nation without laws is not a nation. Hello. Laws passed in accordance with our constitutional system of government must be enforced. Look at the... Ch- if Okay, a nation without laws is not a nation. Laws passed in accordance with our constitutional system of government must be enforced. Look at the chief lawbreaker is, or the chief lawmaker is. It's Barack Obama. He's got that pen of his, and he loves using it. Three, a nation that does not serve its own citizens is not a nation. Any immigration plan must improve jobs, wages, and security for all Americans. I'm saying what you're thinking right now. I know this. The bottom line is... I just I'll just take, for example, the San Francisco Bay Area and all of the cities in the San Francisco Bay Area sanctuary cities. And here's how it works. And this is this works in conjunction with the state legislature in Sacramento. If you are ill, if you're pulled over by the police and you're an illegal alien. And the first thing they ask you, of course, is, you know, do you have a driver's license? No. Do you have insurance for the car? Well, of course not. Guess what? If if this happened to you and me, you know, citizens, legal residents, we would be put in the pokey in no time flat and our car would be impounded. Here's how we do it for the illegals. I'm not making this up. They're pulled over. They're asked those questions. No driver's license, no insurance, no registration. Here's what we're going to do. You're allowed to make a phone call. Go call up your neighbor, your relative, whoever. Have them drive here with another person. Okay, the one person gets out of the car, gets into your car and then drives the vehicle back home for you. And you're told, make sure you go register this car and get a license and don't do this again. Anybody else? You're in trouble. Illegal alien. Pull you over. Send you home. Just call your friend. He can come pick you up. I'm not making this up. Okay, another case in point. See, this is what Trump's getting at. We have two different sets of laws in this country. Another one. With amnesty, the Obama amnesty, if you're here illegally and you've been using somebody else's social security numbers, number for purposes of employment, you're not going to be prosecuted. If I use your social security number or if you use mine, you look at the law. That's up to a $250,000 fine and up to five years in federal prison. We've got two separate sets of laws. This is what Trump is is, uh, tapping into in 147 words. And it's what Savage has been talking about since the mid-90s. A nation that does not serve its own citizens is not a nation. Any immigration plan must improve jobs, wages, and security for all Americans. And by the way, for people who have overstayed their visas, they should be rounded up and thrown out of this country and never allowed back in, for starters. And this anchor baby policy has to end yesterday. And this is something else that's that uh, Trump is bringing up. That's so huge. Here's Karen calling from my home station of KSFO in San Francisco. Karen, you're on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. Thank you, Brian, for taking my call. Talking about these uh, women and kids coming over the border. Right. I have a friend that has two kids under 18. She works for the United States Postal Office. She gets 25 hours a week. They were, they told her you make twelve dollars more. You can't get any insurance on your kids. And, and and then here we go. Like I said, all the illegals are coming in. And come on in. We're going to give your you and your kids insurance. And this poor woman, twenty five hours a week for the United States Postal Service, cannot get insurance for her two kids under eighteen. And that's what I have now to listen. say. Karen, thanks for your call. Here's the deal. 
you know, all of these, it's kind of the, the great Margaret Thatcher quote, socialism is great until you run out of other people's money. I mean, that's what's happening here. These liberals just think, oh, these handouts are so great. You know, they're so altruistic. They're so sensitive. They, they work from emotion. And you can't do that. You cannot do that. You've got to make the hard calls. You can't be doing that kind of stuff. That won't work. You have to make... The law is not based on emotion. The rule of law is not based on emotion. It's not based on feelings. It's based on justice. It's based on right and wrong. And that's why, see, Trump's tapping into something here. There are a lot of African Americans, blacks in this country, who are really upset because they see jobs being taken away by those here illegally. They get it. You have a lot of Latinos in this country. And... Immigrants of other persuasions, people who immigrated to this country legally. They jumped through all the hoops. They dotted the I's. They crossed the T's. They are here legally. They don't like what they're seeing either. Trump, people can call him a racist and a phobe and a xenophobe and all this crap. I got news for you. This guy is touching a subject, and there are people here. It's, it's a much broader audience than the GOP wants to believe, and it's a much broader audience than the liberals will ever believe. He's hitting on something here. That is incredibly important. But we'll talk more about this on the Savage Nation. I can't wait to get to your calls. Uh, by the way, might I mention, Countdown to Mecca is, of course, out. It's, it's Michael Savage's a fiction book, which is a tremendously popular book. It's part of his trilogy. And then also the new book out. Now, this is the nonfiction book entitled Government Zero. This will be out in October. But you can pre-order now from Amazon.com. And I love the subtitle, No Borders, No Language, No Culture. This book is made for today. We'll talk more with you, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. What? Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Get the phone number if you're just joining us. And I know many of you are coming in and out of the program. 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE. Many of you have been with us since the very first moment. And, of course, in terms of the first moment, I remember listening to a Savage the first time he was on the air in the Bay Area in the 90s. Borders, language, culture. Uh, let's talk about those emails and Hillary's problems, folks, because it's a brand new week and a brand new set of problems for Hillary. So this happened yesterday, ABC, their White House correspondent, reported to us, telling us that there may exist a complete set of Clinton emails on a backup server. My goodness. A backup server that can provide investigators with a full record of Hillary's correspondence, even those emails that she said had to do with yoga and wedding plans. My guess is probably $600 haircuts. You know, the one she ordered to be deleted. So there are a couple things here. Uh, First of all, you have the Platte River Networks. That's the Colorado company that set up Clinton's server. They told ABC News, it's very likely that a full backup of the server was made. Well, of course, if they're doing their job properly. Listen, I'm broadcasting from the Silicon Valley. I I open up the lines on my morning show at KSFO, and I hear from techies, uh, many of whom disagree with me on a lot of stuff but on this they are certain that there had to be backups and there has to be ways to find out what she was doing on that server and all the emails coming and going it's an easy thing to do the problem is of course we're dealing with the federal government and nothing's easy for them it's a bureaucratic nightmare but nonetheless i digress what this means is those thousands of emails she deleted because, you know, it was just yoga lessons and wedding plans and $600 haircuts, they probably exist. And, oh, by the way, the company is cooperating with the FBI. That means they do exist. That's my take on it. It's my take. But 
The thing that I like about this development, this is something that Breitbart ended up reporting on. It's a brilliant thought. Perhaps this will expose Hillary Clinton to serious legal problems if the backup files that are discovered reveal she destroyed evidence important to, for example, the Benghazi investigation. Because the primary server on which she supposedly stored all this official and personal stuff has been seized by the FBI. Some say it was scrubbed, but again, folks, we may have a backup. And, and then if I may add, in one of the most damning assessments about Hillary Clinton's potential problems, uh, this comes from famed Watergate reporter, for those of you old enough to remember this stuff, and I, I was just a kid at the time, but I can tell you this name rings a bell, Bob Woodward, right? He was the guy that helped bring down Nixon. Bob Woodward says this situation reminds him of the Nixon tapes and the fall of that former president. So that's what's going on with Hillary. And now, now there's another shoe that's dropped. Suddenly, you know, she told us, if you'll remember, she told us, and I'm bringing out the story here from March 2015, she told us that, eh, let's get the quote for you, she didn't use this server to send any classified information. And she only emailed one foreign leader on the server. That was from the United Kingdom during her time at the state. Never used any of it for official business. Nothing confidential there. And now we know that there are 305 emails that have showed up that indeed show us confidential stuff. Confidential stuff big time. Secret, perhaps even top secret. So the reviewers have screened 20% of the 30,000 emails. And if this rate of potentially secret information remains steady, that means there are going to be five, excuse me, 1,500 email messages total. We'll talk more about that. Let's get your take on it as well. Savage Nation, michaelsavage.com for all your news needs. 855-400-7282. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Enjoy. Michael's back tomorrow. We're talking about Hillary and the emails. So another shoe drops today. Uh, they've screened 20% of the 30,000 emails Clinton handed over to the State Department. And <laughs> right now, if the rate continues, by the time they're through the 30,000, there are going to be about 1,500 messages that will have been flagged for potential secret information. Now, the other part of the equation is this is being restricted reported by mainstream outlets. Uh, Hillary, the private server, which they say has been scrubbed, most likely had a backup. The company that set it up most likely set a backup up. Now, again, I, I work every day in the Silicon Valley. That's where my radio show is heard on KSFO. And I'm surrounded by techies, most of whom probably agree with me on most things and you know, there are some who listen to the program because it's a very entertaining show. And we have a lot of fun in this morning show with my sidekick, the beautiful Katie Green. But the bottom line is, who is hilarious, by the way, but the bottom line is they don't agree with me. But on this particular deal, they agree 100 percent. They've all said, no, all these emails are easily traced and they don't buy it. They just don't buy what Hillary's been selling. So Tom's calling from KSFO, San Francisco. Uh, Tom, I understand you're one of those techie-type guys. Talk to me about Hillary's emails. First of all, I have trouble believing that this homebrew server was as secure as perhaps one that had been located at the Department of State. That would be my first question to you, sir. Thanks for joining us on the Savage Nation. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate the call. Well, I've been fortunate enough that I got into the cellular business when it was Pactel Cellular, AirTouch, then Verizon, same company. Mm -hmm. I've been up on the cell sites, and I can tell you how a little bit that I've learned. Uh, when a call is made or received, you have an electronic serial number on the phone that's not changeable. You have a chip in the phone that's not changeable. And when we were tuning the cell side up, we can listen to every conversation. We know what the chip is because it shows up on the equipment that is supplied. There's tens of thousands of these pieces of equipment 
around the world because they got to tune these things up occasionally. Right. So consequently is once you log that call from Hillary or an incoming call to Hillary, you get the electronic serial number, you get the SIM chip number, and every call that goes in or out can now be documented and recorded. So <laughs> I can't believe somebody hasn't jumped up and actually explained this, that every conversation, I know the Chinese have done this, and the Russians have done this. They have every conversation that she has made on that piece of equipment that she's using. So, so, so the the, the phone conversations are easily traceable, and therefore, just kind of keeping within this realm of electronic communication, I would guess that everything from texts to emails from her home server would be as easily identifiable. Correct. 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 So, we don't have. If we could go to the Chinese or the Russians, we could get every piece of it. Well, see, this is what scares me, Tom, and thanks for your call out of San Francisco. This is what scares me. I mean, who else was able to capture this information? Now, I don't I don't trust our own government's computers because even today there's the story of the IRS. I mean, identity thieves stole tax information from another 220,000 people. They're hacking into all sorts of computers right now. We know this to be true. I believe that from everything I've read happening in the Silicon Valley, the Chinese have teams of people trying to hack into all the enterprise companies in the Silicon Valley on a regular basis, and likely our government as well. But that concerns me greatly. But nonetheless, I just, I'm like most people in the polls. I don't trust Hillary. You, do you trust her? I mean, she's married to this bozo who lied to the American people regarding his sexual appetite for young women, women young enough to be the age of his daughter, which is sickening right off the bat. It's kind of perverted, don't you think? Let's go to Joe WABC. All right, we'll ping pong across the country from the left coast to the right coast. Joe, uh, you're on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. From the left to the right. Here we go. I, I only wish I had the program here after, I think, we you end at 5. So I'm enjoying the fact that... Uh, I'm able to talk to you. And right on. Brian, I'm really enjoying you. I, I've been listening to uh, Dr. Savage since he took over from the other two. Uh, I will, they will remain nameless uh, broadcasters here, and you're a terrific replacement for him. So, well, thank you. Okay, so, so get on with this, because I think you're about to make that, a really great point, Joe. That, that being said... I really, I've been been watching this. I've been reading. I'm 85 years old. I've wrote, I've been reading newspapers for what 55, 60 years. Uh, I was reading the New York Times until Punch Salzberger turned it over to his son, and suddenly the op-ed pages leaked right into the news stories, and right. the news became biased. And it is now one of the most liberal biased papers. The Washington Post actually pales <laughs> in comparison. But at any rate. What struck me several months ago was when the story of the uh, story of the Clinton Foundation, uh, excuse me, <coughs> Clinton Foundation broke, and then shortly after, or was it shortly before, the uh, the server broke, the story in the eye of the uh, Inspector right. General's you know reports. Now they weren't broken in the in the Wall Street Journal, or they weren't broken in the Washington Times, but. New York Times and the Washington Post, who never had a bad thing to say about the Clinton. Right. Forever. I mean, I can never remember them going after a Clinton or any Democrat who was high up in the party. Even Harry Reid, who was that, that bozo, speaking of bozos out there. But at any rate, it struck me. I said, why? Why are they doing this? Why are they publishing this? And then it came to me and I said, it has to have been leaked from the White House. Or somehow or other, they had to have the knowledge that the White House would approve of these news stories coming out. And so, they... Joe, are you of a mind that I've been receiving all sorts of email? You know, here we are going into the, the final stretch of a three-hour program on the Savage Nation. I've received all sorts of emails from people all over the country who are saying, you know, there may be something to this. Perhaps it was the Obama, you know, the Obama have... Barack Obama has a dislike for the Clintons. I think that's pretty opposite. All you have to do is look back to the primary when they were running against each other. There was a lot of bad blood flowing. I can't believe for a moment that's that's all been soothed over. So some are, are you know, they're putting on their little tinfoil caps and they're saying, hey, wait a second. Maybe this is 
Barack Obama's way of clearing Hillary out of the way so that she doesn't have a chance to run for the White House. Break this news story. Let the Republicans run with it. Oh, there's something juicy here. Maybe it will will bring her down. And that gives an opportunity for, oh, I don't know, anybody from Crazy Uncle Joe to, uh, to O'Malley or even Bernie Sanders, who Barack Obama probably likes a lot. Uh, maybe they could become president of the United States. I mean, I'm looking at the email. This is the theory that's being bounced around towards me from, I'm looking here, probably 50, over 50 people right now. Right. Now, the fellow at the, the tinfoil hat, he made a good point. He said they could have brought this out any time over the last several years when she was Secretary of State. They could have brought this out and it would have gone, you know, gone past us. But mm-hmm. they brought it out at a critical point for Hill. Right. 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 They were sitting on. I, listen, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm just, what, what has intrigued me, and thanks for your call, Joe, uh, what has intrigued me from the get go is that this is a story that was picked up by, as Joe just mentioned, mainstream media op- organizations. And now you even have guys like the man who helped take down Richard Nixon saying this reminds him a lot of the Nixon situation at Watergate. So, okay. Do you think this could bring Hillary down? Or does she have, as I described earlier, I think I called it uh, elite. She will have, um, she will be, she will be able to escape, escape uh, elite immunity, elite immunity. Is this a case where Hillary Clinton is going to be able to escape by because she's Hillary Clinton? How much is this going to stick? The real problem is we have so many voters in this country who are so clueless. They don't even know anything about this. And it's Hillary, she's got the D on the end of her name, and they think she's a rock star. Phone number on the Savage Nation, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Let's continue, and we'll talk about, well, we were talking about this earlier, 14th Amendment. Anchor babies. Anchor babies. Um, I think Donald Trump has hit another one out of the park by saying we've got to stop this birthright citizenship. We've got to stop the anchor babies. 14th Amendment was written, of course, in response to slavery. Has nothing to do with people slipping across our border from the South or flying in from China to have a baby just so it can be a U.S. citizen. Larry, WABC. Larry, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. That is correct, Brian. Thank you very much for taking my call. Uh, It is about the 14th Amendment, which has been bastardized by both parties in this country since the hard stuff back to the signing of the law in 1965. Uh, they both lie. Uh, a person who gives birth to a child in this country from a foreign nation is not an American citizen. The 14th Amendment makes clear with the phrase, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been included. It would have just stated a person born and naturalized in the United States of America is an American citizen. Right. And it says a person born and naturalized in the United States of America and subject to the jurisdiction thereof is an American citizen, meaning that any person who comes here from another country who's not an American citizen who gives birth to a child in this country, that child is subject to the jurisdiction of the origin of the parent's birth. And both parties have been lying to, that, to the American people for years over that and have convinced everybody that just because a child is born in this country, it is a natural American citizen. Well, uh, okay, case in point, we have all these uh, diplomats from all sorts of countries who are you know, at the U.N., for example. I'm sure that on a regular basis, these diplomats are, you know, the, the, the wives of the guys, or maybe the, the female diplomats themselves that are on the staff from another country, they give birth to a child in the United States. Those people are, those kids, those babies, are not U.S. citizens right off the bat. So it doesn't apply to those in the diplomatic camp. So why should it apply to somebody who sneaks across the border illegally, again, you know, walks into a hospital in San Diego or Texas and says, I'm pregnant, I need help. Baby, whoa, citizen, anchor, chain migration, come on down. It's not supposed to work like that. And then, and then again, Brian, you, you addressed one other uh, point of uh, illegal immigration in this country, those who overstay their visas. Most of them aren't jumping over the fence. Most of them are coming here legally through chain yes. uh, migration also. Or to, or to get an education or whatever the case may be, maybe even just a vacation. They come here and they realize that they're not going to get thrown out of the country or deported. And they right. come the emotions of the American citizen, which is a topic that we really need to address, is a child who was born here 18 years ago to illegal parents and is 18 years old. Well, they're, they're, they're Americans 
through tradition and culture or so. So what, what do we do with them? Send them back to a country that they know nothing of? So that it, well, they've created a big problem. Yes, it's the system is broken, just as you described. And again, who broke this system? It's the politicians in Washington, D.C., and our various state houses working in concert with one another who have brought us to this particular place. Therefore, I believe that's why Donald Trump, Ben Carson, Carly Fiorina, they're getting attention because people are sick and tired of politicians, the very politicians who have gotten us into this pickle to begin with. I agree with your call, and I thank you for checking in on this, The Savage Nation. We don't have a lot of time left, but I want to get to as many calls as possible because it's always a great joy to speak to this audience. You know, I usually uh, I don't get this opportunity often, certainly not enough. But when I do, I relish it. I love speaking to people from all over the United States. So one more shout-out with the phone number, and that's 855-400-SAVAGE. MichaelSavage.com for all your news needs. Uh, by the way, just... To let you know, uh, Michael's new book, Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture, will be out soon. You can pre-order a copy right now at Amazon.com. Again, the title of the book is Government Zero. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Michael's back tomorrow. Uh, it's interesting, isn't it? What, what do we want in this country? What do people who are concerned about their safety, concerned about their country, concerned about the future want? Well, thanks to the Donald, we're done with sanctuary cities. Where have the Republicans been on this one for all these years? I live in California. I, almost every state, every, almost every city in the Bay Area, what we've got six, seven million people here. Almost every city is a sanctuary city, to my knowledge. Maybe every city. They're all sanctuary cities. We don't want that. So Trump calls for defunding sanctuary cities. Hello, Republican Party. Wake up on this one, guys. You need to start embracing some of these ideas vocally. And you need to, instead of disassociating and, and demeaning the people that like what Trump's saying right now, quit name-calling them Trumpites, xenophobes, haters. We don't like sanctuary cities. We should defund them. We should build a border wall. None of this, oh, we've got virtual a virtual wall. How's that working out for us? Stop the catch and release program. Have mandatory deportation of all criminal aliens. This is everything Trump's talking about in his plan that he brought forward. That's it. That's what we want. It's very simple. It's very simple. And it's everything Savage has been talking about for years with uh, language, borders, culture. Everything. But on top of that, I'm reading, this is a really great commentary by Ted, uh, Todd Starnes. It's an opinion piece at uh, foxnews.com. But he said, there's a reason why Donald Trump is smoking his Republican competition. He wants to put Americans first, not the illegals. Trump understands a fundamental truth. The United States of America has been invaded by millions of illegals from Mexico and parts due south. Oh, don't say that. You're a hater. Well, come on. Continuing, the illegals are pillaging and plundering our economy. Some are raping and murdering our fellow countrymen. They've been giving accommodation at the expense of the American taxpayer. Savage will be talking about this in the upcoming book, Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture. Brian Sussman, always a pleasure to fill in behind this microphone on this, The Savage Nation.